In this video, we're going to look at some of the wave functions for the particle in a box in some plots. So over on the right here, once again, welcome back to MATLAB. We have a MATLAB script over here which is going to prepare a plot of a particle in a box wave function given the quantum number n, uh, which solution we want. And we saw that n appears both in the wave function and in the energy. So if we go ahead and look at that, I have this particle in a box plot function and then I'm just going to call the solution for n equals 1. And then in the plot here we see we have our psi of x which is the psi 1 where n equals 1 is square root of 2 over l times sine 1 pi x over l. So this plot here is just in units of l for position and the amplitude of it is in inverse units of L. So just plug in a value of L and divide your y-axis by L and multiply your x-axis by L and that'll be the plot given a specific length value. But this plot right here is irrespective of our choice for L. So first what we see, we see this sine function. This was the same as the uh, as the first solution for the classical wave equation for a vibrating string and that's nothing special it's just a sine function that go, that reaches zero at both ends of the box but then for the probability distribution function which is that psi star times psi the complex conjugate of the wave function times itself or another way of saying that is the absolute magnitude of the wave function squared for that function um, since psi is real in every case it doesn't have any imaginary component uh, for this case at least uh, we can just square it and then we get 2 over L times sine squared uh, and again 1 pi x over L so we have a sine squared function here so you notice now it's a little bit flatter a little bit more distributed towards the center and that normalization constant ensures that if we were to integrate this uh, probability distribution function this psi star psi over the entire range from 0 to L we would get 1. We would get there is a certainty that the particle is somewhere inside this box because we said that the probability of finding the particle within a certain region is proportional to the value of the wave function inside that region or sorry the proportional to the wave function squared inside that region. So this is what it looks like for the n equals 1 case, the energy as we see, it's n squared h squared over 8 ml squared, h being Planck's constant, l length of the box, m mass of the particle. And this n squared, these energy, this energy will be increasing quadratically as we go up to higher and higher solutions. So if we move to n equals 2, we see we have sine wave that goes up and then goes down. But because we're squaring for the probability of the particle, we get a value which is greater than zero at all points. And that makes sense. We shouldn't have a negative probability anywhere. And you get two of these peaks here. So there's a peak over here where the particle is quite likely to be, and there's also a peak over here where it's quite likely to be. And our energy has gone up to four times this h squared over eight ml squared. And similarly, going up to n equals three, we have three peaks, and you see it doesn't matter whether the wave function is positive or negative uh, for this specific case, uh, this specific model system, we're always getting these, these humps here which are positive, where there's a lot of particle density. And you can take this up to quite high levels, we could say n equals 8. Keep going, you'll get the same kind of general trend as you go. So, uh, if we just want to take a look at these, uh, as they as they go, I have this other function here, this particle in a box animation script, which takes a bunch of those up from n equals one to n equals some max n that I pick, and then makes a movie of those going up. So let's just see what that looks like. Let's go all the way up to n equals nine, uh, and have those frames go about one every three seconds here. So watching this, you can see how the solutions are adding in. You're adding one within this sine argument every time. The normalization constant doesn't change. That doesn't depend on n. So the maximum value of the function and the maximum value of uh, the wave function squared doesn't change for a particle in a box. And we see the energy getting quite large here once we're getting up to very large values of n. 
and then that repeat that's going to repeat back to the beginning here and another thing you see is right now the particle is pretty localized in one or a few of these regions here but as more and more of these regions appear the particles position is going to get more and more spread out so the particle is going to be more and more uncertain on where its position is but we're actually when we calculate this out we're going to calculate what the uncertainty in the position and what the uncertainty in the momentum is and as we see by now the, we're very uncertain by n equals nine the particles quite well spread out across the box we're going to see that while the uncertainty for the position of the particle has gone up the the uncertainty for the momentum has gone down and that's a connection to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle which we're going to look at in more mathematical uh, details in later videos. Sorry, quick error note. In the rest of the video, this legend was slightly incorrect. This should be absolute magnitude of psi squared as it looks here. The legend in the rest of the video was somewhat incorrect for this place right down here. So this is the correct version for what the legend should look like.